a lot of positives to build on, a lot of great players. Hello everybody and welcome to another FIF TV video. I'm Dov, he's Vieri and uh, we're going to talk about Lazio today. There we go. But first, as always, as you're probably used to it by now, go and click on the link below and buy some things from the FIF shop. Lazio fans, we've got Giorgio uh, Cinaglia stuff. Yeah, Cinaglia. Cinaglia, there you go. Well, he used to play in America, so they say chips, so there you go. But it's in the description um, and you can buy things with him on it. He's a legend, of course. I had that from a Lazio fan who told me that. He, he absolutely is. Um, and this season could have been legendary for Lazio. Could have been, but... <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> or not as legendary. Um, right, so where, where, where do we start? Should we start at the end? We have to start from the end, because in the same way as Inter's season and judgment was defined by that moment, that Vecino goal, Lazio's is as well, inevitably. Yeah. What went wrong? The, what I think Lazio screwed up. They, they, they basically, they, they were two and up with 10 minutes to go. There's, there's no way in hell they should have lost that game. At home. No way in hell. At home as well. No way in hell they should have lost that game. And then, De Vrij, whether you should have played or not is up for debate. Giving away the penalty, which was then the catalyst for Lulic being sent off, which was then the uh, even bigger catalyst for Vecino's own goal, which put Lazio under the car. So it's kind of like a a circle of things, kind of the, our chain reaction of this happened, which led to this, which led to this, which what, led to What has to be said is that they definitely were the most consistent team, I'd say, mm. uh, of the ones fighting for a Champions League spot. We've said that all season, that there, there hasn't been a time where Lazio have been poor over a, continue, a, a yeah. long period of time, but they've had a poor game here or there. But in general, they've always been... They played good football, um, exciting attacking football, best attack of the league. Mm. Best ever attack in terms of amounts of goals scored by Lazio in the, in the history of Serie A. A lot of positives to build on, a lot of great players uh, you know, being shown, so it's just a shame that you know, they, they bottled it in, well, in two main games against Salzburg in the Europa League, League and yeah, against well, Inter. Well, exactly, because in the Europa League they could probably have got to the final. If they beat in Salzburg, and then obviously yeah, they would have been one of, one of the favourites. Yeah, yeah, and then obviously with Inter, they should be in the Champions League. I think their fans. No, this is why this is why football's great because you, you know strange things um, happen. Who the, were the, the the key players? Well, it's, you, you, it's you, difficult. Well, you mentioned the attack, and that's where we'll start. Giro Immobile smashing loads of goals. Well, Capo Canonier, yeah. 29 goals. And Luis Alberto. No also, Capo, wait, let me say, Immobile also top scorer of um, the Europa League with eight. There you go. That's eight and 29, it's already 37. Yeah, smashed it. And Luis Alberto. Biggest, biggest surprise of the season for me in Serie A. Nobody expected anything from him. Obviously, he was there at Lazio last season, didn't play. Nobody yeah. like, thought, no, who is, like, this guy's not doing anything. And then he just switched yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, it was brilliant. Um, probably, I, I want to say the discovery, but the guy who's getting a lot of plaudits is Sergei Milinkovic Savage. Yeah, I mean, he's the hundred million pound guy. He's the guy all the teams want. He's um, great. Like, proper midfield. There's little you can do. You can, you can say about him. He himself switched off in a couple of games. Mm. Um, you could argue that even against Inter, he was amazing for 65 minutes and then kind of disappeared. That's because he's probably still to reach his. Best, best level, he can still grow as a player, yeah. but already right now he's a fantastic midfielder. The other one has to be mentioned, I think, is the Fry, who's gonna go to Inter. You know, he's been in the news quite a lot. He was crying afterwards, yeah. and, it's like, and then everybody's like, yeah, crocodile tears. Yeah. Which <laughs> I'm sure how it'll go. But, but Lazio have a lot of exciting talent, um, someone like Felipe Anderson. Uh, Marusic yeah. as well. Marusic, Marusic has, has great, had a great well, season. I, like I think the, the, the thing with Lazio is just that is the squad depth. Basically, yeah. I think that kills them um, almost every season. Like they've got a really, like they always manage to put together a really, really good team. Lucas Leiva, we didn't mention him as well. He's, yeah, he's, he, well, considering they sold Biglia and um, brought in uh, Lucas Leiva, he was definitely one of the yeah, key men. Exactly, Biglia was not missed whatsoever. So I mean, there's you can kind of go through that whole Lazio like first eleven and just to see. I think the, well. see, the key man, Simone one guy, is Simon Inzaghi. Moving on to the coach because the team plays that well and all the players shine in the best mm. positions because he is he's proven to be such a good manager in the past two seasons yeah no definitely I don't think anybody expected him to be as good as he has been and take a team that has limitations yeah, and a squad that's not as um, 
big as all the other kind of major players in Serie A and take them deep into the Europa League, deep into the Coppa Italia, to literally 10 minutes away from a Champions yeah. League spot. And I think that he deserves immense credit for being able to do that, losing their captain in the summer as well, Bilia, yeah. like we mentioned. Um, and I think he was, I think he's been amazing for me. He was coach of the season. I think yeah, he yeah, yeah. I think job. him. It was fat, it was brilliant. And I think uh, and I think one thing as well. Kind of this, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe talk a bit about this later. But his future. And I think that him staying there looks a bit more likely. And I think it'll be good for Lazio, and they'll build on what they've done this season. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, now moving on to the key moments. It's difficult to, f- to not talk about the final game of the season. Uh, and, um, but let's not forget what l- the, some victories, some key victories for Lazio as well. Thinking when they beat Juve. Uh, Juve in Turin. In Turin. Which is amazing, which doesn't happen very often. I think only like two or three teams, well, three teams like Udinese have done it, Lazio have done it, and Napoli have done it in the last like five seasons or something like that. Sampdoria. Sampdoria, right. Four teams. Inter. The first ones to win at the yeah, the first ones. Yeah, but I'm talking like literally, you're talking about like well, literally a handful five teams. of teams. Yes. No, that was that was definitely like a, a great win, and at, at that point, there was even people talking about the possibility of Lazio challenging for the Scudetto, which was never realistic, just just for the the the, the size of squad oh, yeah. they had. But they were always there and thereabouts, and that's what we've said before. There and thereabouts the whole time, and against the big teams, they always more or less. They always did, did quite well. Uh, they did lose the first derby against Roma. Mm. And uh, and then obviously you know you look at the Salzburg game, the Inter game, uh, two games that were very similar. Lazio dominant for 60, 70 minutes, and then bottled it. So you could question what's going on in the heads of some of the players. Well, even the pressure—they're not used to playing at that level, not consistently. And then uh, the game against Crotone, of course. Where if they won that. Then our game would have been null and void. But they exactly. Didn't. And the, I think Crotone. even more, even more than the Inter game, the Crotone one is one to think about because they had one game, win that game, you're in the Champions League and against a team that got relegated. Yeah, exactly. So that's a big moment for them, uh, probably one that Lazio fans probably don't want to remember. So we'll move on quickly to. <coughs> I just really hit the <laughs> I tried I tried to like drink a bit of water. <coughs> I know I do start. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us nicely on to the future of Lazio. Because it's gotta be a tough one. I think in the summer, obviously there's the talk about Milinkovic Savic probably leaving here, they're probably about hundred million, that's what they're looking for for him. Obviously, De Vrij's left. There's been talk about Giro Immobile as well. Linked to AC Milan. So, it's going to be tough. Without we'll having Champions League football, obviously, if you have players who are wanted by clubs in the Champions League, who can offer more money, it's difficult yeah. to hold on to them. It's inevitable that that moment is so defining for Lazio's future as well. Yeah, in the same exactly. way as it is for Inter's future. One positive thing we were talking about earlier is it's the manager staying. Yeah, exactly. Because it looked, it looked like a, there was a point with all the speculation um, with Allegri leaving Juve that Inzaghi would be yeah. the man to go and replace him. But obviously Allegri looks like he's going to stay at Juve and that means there's no place for him to go. There's no other job for him in Italian football or in kind of European football. Probably also, I don't, I don't see him at the level yet to, to be interesting for European clubs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he might... Uh, Obviously, in, in the future, if he continues at this level, mm. he might get there. But right now, he isn't. And really, where could he go? Maybe mm. Napoli? What, possibly. If Sarri eventually leaves. But, you know, it's, um, it's a difficult one, I think. And it's probably good for him to stay and prove his worth. Yeah, I mean, imagine like, how much his reputation would kind of become bigger if he got Lazio into the Champions League next yeah. season. Because I think obviously they'll be back in the Europa League. They've done that. They kind of know how to do it because they've done it. They've done yeah. it quite often in recent years. If they get a hundred million for Milinkovic Savic, then if they invest that wisely and don't sell anybody else, they'll yeah. do well. And I think Inzaghi's Inzaghi's. I think he's a great coach. I love him. And I think if they've got him at the helm, then I don't think they'll be that kind of mad. I don't think the bottom will fall out of the club. 
Yeah, as, yeah. Much, as much as everybody hates Lotito and he's he, an idiot. He's giving, he'll give the team the security they yeah. need to, to carry on. There we go. Right, so that's Lazio done, everybody. Let us know what you think about Inzaghi as a coach. Do you agree with me and think he's the coach of the season? Or do you think he's just been fortunate? Like, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about Lazio losing it in the last game of the season as well, in the last 10 minutes? What do you think about that? And what does that tell you about Lazio? So, until next time, or actually wait, before next time, you need to go and follow us on social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Links are all in the description as well. And go to the shop and go to ForzaItalianFootball.com too. So, until next time, there's nothing left for me to say apart from Arrivederci.